All right. So today uh, we're here to talk about UI extensions for mobile, also known as Orbit. And of course, I already introduced myself, Dan Zucker, and I'm here with Ray Rishpater. So uh, tonight I'm going to give a brief overview, and then I'll hand off to Ray, and he's going to do the developer deep dive, and we'll actually hear some stuff developers are actually interested in how to how to use some Orbit widgets. Okay, so what is UI extensions for mobile, also known as Orbit. So first of all, both of these are actually project names, so um, there might be some yet un other name coming in the future. <laughs> but we've been told, um, basically, Orbit is okay to use, UI extensions for mobile is okay to use. <coughs> and um, the thing that is really exciting is, of course, it has been open sourced as of about three weeks ago at Gatorius, so that, that is the link. So that is what is allowing us to give this talk right now. So I'm pretty excited because I've been talking to John for a while. He's been wanting to hear about this. And now, um, now with open sourcing of Orbit, of course, you have Symbian, you have Qt, and you have Orbit, all open source. So basically, everything is out there. You can download the code. You can build it, hack around with it. Pretty cool stuff. So actually, has anyone looked at it yet? Um, so one person. <laughs> so. Um, could I request that you just move slightly to either side of the screen for the video <laughs> tape? So, um, Perfect. it is um, developed initially for Symbian. Ray and I are on the Symbian team, but this is intended eventually to be cross-platform. And actually, if you look on YouTube, um, there is an example of some third party that has already built this for the um, Mono device. Exactly, so it's pretty interesting stuff. This is going to be, um, it's announced that Orbit is what's powering the, the UI for Symbian to the fourth. And um, let's talk about what is it a little bit more. So basically, it is a set of UI extensions built on top of Qt, providing many things needed for mobile. The most important and most obvious are um, basically a set of mobile widgets. So you, you get things like you know, list views, grid views, you get this uh, chrome on top with the title bar. So uh, set of widgets, here's just small subset, doc, group box. Um, basically the set of widgets you need to build mo mobile applications. Um, the other thing that is important is these widgets are based on key graphics view. So that means you get all the um, scenes, you get the advanced 3D shading. So this is kind of the trend in mobile. You're seeing all the advanced UIs are built using 3D graphics technologies. So this now allows you to do all kinds of really cool special effects. <coughs> you have the integrated input frameworks, which also very uh, important for a mobile device. So you can get the handwriting recognition. You get the keyboards in multiple languages all integrated in. Um, it's a very key feature. Question. Yeah. Is this integrated uh, into Symbian or is the integration in Orbit? Which part? The input method integration. So, um, I haven't looked. <laughs> My understanding is it sits on top of Qt, but there may be some things <coughs> that go deeper. So it's not using the old Symbian input framework at all. It is, in fact, all new from the ground up. Okay, and so the input framework is a part of the Orbit extension? Yeah, it's one of the services it offers, and I'll dive more into that kind of in a couple of slides. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Dan. Sure. So uh, moving along, you get the tactile feedback and gesture support, which again, very popular, and this is based on the, the cute gesture framework, but Orbit uh, extends that. Is it multi-touch enabled? Um, Yes. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's out there. If you read the code, yes. <laughs> it is multi touch yeah. Right. yeah. You'd have to write your own gesture handlers to get it, okay. but you can get the data. Yeah. And then a key part of this is the theming. So everybody is used to the ability to theme your mobile device, so you know, change the entire look and feel. And the uh, you know, big thing is being able to buy themes and download themes. So this is a key part of Orbit. This is all integrated in. So pretty much every widget is themable. The, the effects are part of your theme, so you can theme transitions, all that kind of stuff. Question? So uh, does it work only with the touch screen devices? Only with touch screen. Um, I don't think so. Is that a limitation? The, 
the focus, my understanding is the focus right now is touch and hybrid, but not necessarily non-touch immediately um, for the first release. Yeah, Symbian 4 in general. Yeah, it's yes, yes. Just, just touch devices, and after that, it's going to see where it goes. <laughs> yeah. All right. And then the last piece is the um, text is the localization in 48 languages, which here in Silicon Valley we tend to be very U.S. and English focused. But really for Nokia, I think 48 is actually on the small side. Every single device has to support. Actually, I thought the number was closer to 80, but a huge number of languages, lots of variants, left to right, right to left. So this is all a very fundamental part of the framework. So that is a key thing. What about? Speech input for the framework. Speech input. You have nothing there now. Yeah. I mean, I imagine you'd probably, I imagine it would be wired up someplace at the cute level rather than the orbit level. But I think it would be the same as now with the plug in. So, so uh, it depends on the front end processor that people can develop more plug in capability and plug mm -hmm. into the framework, including handwriting recognition using. Mm -hmm. So um, this actually says many of the same things, but in a different way. So we talked about the scene-based representation of graphics, so that gives you the 3D effects, the UI components. Layouts um, optimized for screen independence, so that is really key, um, because of course this is intended for a large variety of devices. So the layout is built to take advantage of that. Cute gesture framework, device theming we talked about, and system-wide dialogues and virtual input methods. So again, a full pack of features ready for mobile development. So here's an overview of the architecture. And right, yeah. get after it. So this is the classic stack diagram, and it oversimplifies most of what's going on, but at the same time, at least it lets you figure out, okay, where does the UI extensions for mobile sit, and who does it talk to? So under the hood, you have Symbian with you know, all the, the hardware stuff and the, and the facilities that Symbian offers. And then going up a level, this really, this whole second block, I mean, this is all of Qt from our perspective. There's the baseline Qt with the core, the GUI, WebKit, that kind of thing. But there's also the mobile extensions um, for Qt for Symbian. That's being the work, the work that's being done right now on that. And then on top of the Qt layer is Orbit itself. And I haven't seen any spots, is that true? I haven't seen many spots where Orbit goes all the way down to Symbian. There are some points where it does, if you look at how, for example, the PixMap stuff for accelerated graphics comes up. That goes all the way down, but really most of it is just sitting on top of Qt, which makes both using it and working with it very nice, because if you know Qt, you know enough of the paradigms right away to sort of jump in with Orbit, either build a small app, or say, hey, that widget isn't doing what I want, since it's open source, I think we should talk about making a change and actually understand how to do it. And then you can access any of these APIs from any of the applications that are written. So certainly there are some apps that may just be running as Symbian servers or the like, and you can use like a Qt collection class if you want, or you could go right back down to Symbian. What not, what's not provided here and not, is notably absent is the S60 UI, Abcon. <coughs> Abcon already has been removed from this as a platform, so that if you want to do anything you can you know, interact with on the screen, you'll have to at least use Qt or Orbit. But you can blend, blend and mix and match aside from that limitation of things that you want to do. Interesting. Yeah. Is the uh, Qt animation framework also like, is Orbit using that or uh, how is that fun? fun? 